Okay, Trig students. Um, I kind of lied the other day when I said 9-2 was going to be the last section. Technically it is. But um, the instructor at Missouri Valley changed the final a little bit on me. Um, didn't change the title. It still says 2018, I believe, but he changed the content. So um, there are a few questions from chapter 11, which we never covered. However, we did it back in Algebra 2. So um, I'm going to give you a crash course here so you can do four of the questions on the final. So it's about conic sections. Um, We've got parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas. Again, we did this in Algebra 2. So I made a couple of slides of notes along with some practice problems, just like from the final, hint, hint, wink, wink. And um, anyway, just to kind of get you back up to speed. I know it's been a while, but about a year actually. Um, anyway, so the first one we're going to talk about is parabolas. And we've talked about parabolas when we solve quadratics. This is a little different way to look at it. Um, I don't know if you all remember when we talked about directrix and focus. Um, these notes that I've copied are actually from the Algebra 2 book. I took some, uh, I took my snipping tool and copied them and pasted them in here so we could look at it. Um, so you can see here, if you have a formula where it's x squared equals something with y, um, that's either going to be a parabola that points up or points down. Depends on the p here. The basic formula is x squared equals 4py. If p is greater than zero, then the parabola points up. Um, the deal with focus and directrix, that's actually where these conic sections come from. Um, any point on a parabola, if I put a point up here on this parabola, let me change color here, it is equidistant from the focus to the directrix, okay? Any point on a parabola, if you measure distance from that point to the focus and, whoops, I, didn't, I took it down to the x-axis, not the directrix, to the directrix, these are the same length. Okay, that's kind of, um, you can actually find some GIFs online that will kind of like draw a parabola or an ellipse or a hyperbola using string, and it kind of proves to you that they're equidistant. It's kind of cool if you want to look some of those GIFs up. Um, anyway, so that just kind of gives you a bird's eye view here. Also, as you scroll down, and again, these notes will be available to you in the class drive folder in chapter 11. And also, I'll attach them to the YouTube video here. Um, but here's the key concepts. Again, if we have our equation, then if it's an x-squared equation, our focus is going to be on the y-axis somewhere. Um, our directrix is going to be a horizontal line. And our axis of symmetry is, of course, going to be vertical. If we have an equation that is y-squared, Okay, our focus is going to be on the x-axis, our directrix is going to be a vertical line, and the axis of symmetry is going to be horizontal. That's these up here, okay? That's when we have our y-squared instead of our x-squared. So let's do the problem that you will see similar to the one in your final. So an equation of a parabola is given, x squared equals negative 4y. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me if I go back, it's an x squared. So it's going to be a parabola either facing up or down. Okay, um, so basic form of those parabolas, remember, is x squared equals 4py. So for us, we have x squared equals negative 4y. So that means that 4p equals negative 4. So my p is negative 1. Okay, that's the first thing. So that gives me my focus. My focus is going to be the ordered pair 0, negative 1. Okay, again, if you go back on this and you go down here to the key concepts, what's your focus? This is the one we're solving on the next slide. Your focus is 0, p. Okay, well, we just found that our P was negative 1. So that's our focus. Okay, um, our directrix. Again, if we go back a slide, what's our directrix? Our directrix is Y equals negative P. So that means our directrix is going to be 
y equals positive 1. It's the opposite sign of the focus y coordinate. Our focal diameter, actually, let me draw it first, and then we'll talk about, we'll go back up and talk about focal diameter. Now, this is going to have your center at the origin, okay? And since we're kind of used to solving things in terms of y, think about this as y equals negative x squared over 4, or negative 1 fourth x squared. Okay, so if we make kind of a handy dandy table here of my x values and my y values, I'm going to just graph a few major ones, okay, and I'm picking numbers that I know once I square it are easily divisible by four to make my math nice and neat. First of all, if I plug in a zero, I know I'm going to get a zero. If I plug in a negative four, negative four squared is 16, okay, 16 divided by four is four, but it's negative. So I'm going to have 4, negative 4. If I plug in a 2, 2 squared is 4, divided by 4 is 1, but it's going to be a negative 1. This, again, is going to give me a negative 1 and a negative 4. So if I plot those points, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Here's my negative 4, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 1. This is kind of a fat parabola. Remember, if your A term, the term that's in front of your... Um, squared term, if it's a fraction, it's going to be a fatter parabola. So here's what my parabola looks like, roughly. Okay, now my focus, you remember my focus was 0, negative 1. This is my focus. My directrix was y equals 1. This right here is the directrix. Okay. So every point on this parabola is equidistant to the focus and to the directrix. And remember, when you're measuring distance from a point to a line, it has to be measured perpendicularly because that's the shortest distance. Um, so remember, that's the whole, that's pretty much the whole definition of a parabola. Okay. Now, they asked for the focal diameter. Here's focal diameter. Focal diameter is the length of a line that is parallel to the directrix and goes through the focus and has endpoints on the parabola itself. So this right here is the focal diameter. Okay, again, it's parallel to the directrix, it goes through the focus. Okay, and its endpoints are on the parabola. So our focal diameter is one, two, three, four long. So that's the length of our focal diameter. Okay. Sorry, I, I hope I didn't confuse you. Let me put these in black so that you're not confused with what the focal diameter is. So focal diameter, again, parallel to the directrix, okay, goes through the focus, and endpoints are on the parabola. That's focal diameter. Okay, and that length is four. That's what they're looking for. Okay, I hope that kind of jogs some memory. Now, let's go on to ellipses. Again, these are some notes that I snipped out of the um, Algebra 2 book. They should look somewhat familiar on an ellipse. It's kind of like a squished circle, if you will. Um, you've got a major and a minor axis. Your major axis is your longer one, okay? So like on this one, this right here, let me use red since they're in red, this right here you can tell is your major axis, okay? That's your longer one. And it um, it is always denoted by the A because that's where our vertex goes. So here's my vertex, okay? 
vertex is on the end. You can see in the green, the vertex is negative A0 or positive A0. And then we've also got focuses. This is a fun one if you look up a GIF um, for ellipses and how they come to be. Um, they literally like pin a um, the end of a string on the two foci. That's plural of focus um, on the two foci. And then they use a pencil to kind of stretch the string taut and then go around. That's where an ellipse gets its shape. Um, so the distance on an ellipse, okay, from any point on an ellipse to the focus, okay, remains the same. Now the, the two ends don't remain the same, but this total length of black that I just drew there remains the same all the way around. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Um, anyway, key concepts down here. Again, A is your bigger term. So if A is under the X term here, Okay, that means that your X is your major axis is going to be horizontal. If your A, if your bigger term is under the Y, that means your major axis is going to be vertical. Okay. And again, you can see by the vertical one, that just means that your foci are on your major axis, they're vertical, they're on the Y axis then. And uh, don't really talk much about covertex, but that's how wide the ellipse is going to be versus long. But on ellipses, two things I want to point out. They always have a plus and they should always equal one. Okay, you should always have a plus and you should always equal one. That's how you know it's an ellipse. Okay, all right. Now that we've kind of hit the high points here. Oh, one more thing. C is where we get our foci. And here's the formula for C. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay, that's where your foci coordinate comes from is from C. So C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay, let's look at one of the problems from your final. Now, first thing I see up here is there's a plus. We have an X squared, a Y squared equal a constant. There's a plus between them. It kind of looks like an ellipse, but it doesn't equal one. So what do we have to do? First thing we have to do is come in here and divide every term by 196 to get a one on the other side. So when I do that, I end up with, this turns into x squared over four plus y squared over 49 equals one. Okay, that's what it turns into. So again, this one, my a squared, okay, this is going to be my a squared now because it's bigger. This is going to be my b squared because it's smaller. So that means my a is 7. That means my b is 2. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, so my vertex, remember your vertex is your major axis. It's going to be on your y axis. Okay, and you'll notice here they kind of gave that away, it says smaller y value and larger y value. So first of all, my vertex here, since my a is seven, is gonna be zero negative seven and zero positive seven, okay? Now, we're also graphing that. I like to kind of graph as I go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's gonna be one vertex, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's gonna be the other vertex, okay? now. What do you think my co-vertex is going to be? Well, that's going to be my B, okay? So I can go ahead and, and graph that as well. My co-vertex here is going to be, I'm just going to go over two and to the left two. I don't even know that that ends up being a thing, but I like to draw pictures as I go. Okay, now, foci. Remember, your formula here was that C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Well. That is 49 minus 4, which is 45. So that gives us C is plus or minus 3 root 5. Okay, that gives me my foci. Okay, so my smaller y value, now remember your foci is on your major axis, that's your longer one. So the smaller one's going to be 0 minus 3 root 5, 
Notice they didn't tell you to round, so you got to be exact. Got to put the root in there. And zero positive three root five. Okay, so if I go to graph that, that actually, if you poke in a calculator, six point something. So, I mean, it's going to be like very close to your vertice. So if I graph this, I can go ahead. Let's see how bad I, I can screw this up. It's not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. Um, Okay, eccentricity. Now, we didn't talk about eccentricity yet. Um, eccentricity, we didn't talk about in that in uh, Algebra 2 at all, but here's the formula for eccentricity. Eccentricity is just C over A, okay? And eccentricity is a measure of how circular an ellipse is, okay? The closer to one, the more flat. The closer to zero, the more round. Okay. I'm just going to say measure of roundness. Okay. Closer to one, the flatter it gets. Closer to zero, the more circular it gets, okay? That's some bad grammar, but you all get the idea. So our eccentricity, literally C over A. Well, that is just three root five. Again, they didn't tell us to round, so we gotta be exact, three root five over seven. And if you poke that in a calculator, it's like 0.9 something. So you can tell the closer to one, the flatter it is. That's a pretty flat <laughs> ellipse. Okay, determine the length of the major axis. Well, our B, if you remember, was, or sorry, our A was seven. So length of your major axis is just going to be 2A. So that's a big fat 14. Length of your minor axis, that's gonna be 2B. Well, that's just going to be four. And that's it. And we already graphed it. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, okay, let's move on. Now, I added this kind of in the middle. The next problem is still an ellipse. However, um, we've got standard form when the center or the vertex or the whatever, depending on what we're talking about, um, isn't zero zero if it's not the origin okay so notice i put the title conics with center slash vertex other than the origin now they have circle up there we hadn't really talked about it but um in this section anyway and then they have parabolas ellipses hyperbolas notice on the ellipses and hyperbolas essentially all that's changed is this hk hk okay hk that just tells us again HK is the vertex of the parabola and the center of the other conics, okay? So we just have to know that that's kind of what it looks like uh, when we don't have the center at the origin. Okay, next one. Um, okay, so on this one, you can tell that we have an HK now. Notice we don't just have numerators that start with an X squared on top and a Y squared. Okay, so this is my H, this is my K. All right, so my center is going to be 3, 2. I hope you can see that already. Okay, now that changes things a little bit with our focus. Okay, but before we get to focus, we've got to still know our, our A and our B. Now, if you remember, okay, um, in this one, our A squared here is 16. So I'm going to write it over here on the side. Whoops, and I just wrote 6. A squared is 16. So A is obviously 4. 
Uh, b squared is 4, so b is obviously 2. Now, if you remember, the formula for our focus was c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Okay, well, for us, that is 16 minus 4, which is 12. Take the square root of that. That gives me c is plus or minus 2 root 3. Okay, and in order to get our focus, we have to add or, and I should say not or, add and subtract that from the center. Now, when I say from the center, I need, I'm talking about the coordinates on our major axis. Now, because the a squared is under the x, that means our major axis is going to be horizontal. Okay? So, um, let me write that up there. Major axis is going to be horizontal. Okay, again, that's because the A squared, the bigger one, was under the X term. And X is your horizontal axis. Okay, so how do we get our focus? Again, we have to take that C and add and subtract it from the X term of the center. Okay, so this is going to be 3 minus 2 root 3, comma 2. Again, they don't tell us to round, so we got to be exact. And they wanted the smaller x value. That's why I started with the minus 2 root 3. And then the larger x value would be 3 plus 2 root 3, comma 2. Again, we did this, believe it or not, in Algebra 2. It's just been a while. Okay. Now, vertex. First of all, let me get down to my graph here. Okay. My center remember was 3 2 so over 3 up to here's my center okay now let, let's do the vertex and co-vertex um my a is 4 okay so i'm going to go over 4 1 2 3 4 this is a vertex and 1 2 3 4 this is my other vertex now my co vertices if you remember my b was two. So that's your vertical axis. That's your minor axis, if you will. So I'm going to go up two from the center and down two from the center. So this right here is my ellipse. Okay, not great, not terrible. Now, my foci, okay, three plus two root three and three minus two root three, okay. Um, so 3 plus 2 root 3 is like 6.5-ish. Um, so again, my foci are going to be very near here. 3 minus 2 root 3 is going to be like almost negative a half. So again, those are my foci. Okay, um, my vertice then, or my, my vertex, vertices, plural. Again, I already graphed those, okay? That was here and here. Well, what are those coordinates? Okay, that is 7, 2. Oh, first they want the smaller x value, sorry. So that would be negative 1, 2. And then the other vertex would be 7, 2. Again, 4 to the left and 4 to the right of the center because my A was 4. That's where all that comes from. Okay. Now, determine the lengths of the major and minor axes. Well, obviously, your major axis is going to be 2A. Okay. That's your major axis. Your minor axis is going to be 2B, 2 times B. So the major axis is 7 units long. The minor axis is four units long. Again, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why did I put seven? It should have been eight. Not sure where I wrote seven. 
and then minor axis, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm not sure where I got seven at. I think I looked up above at the vertex. Um, so major axis is eight units long, minor axis is four units long, from the co-vertex to the other co-vertex. Okay, so very similar to the previous one we did, only the center was not the origin. So it honestly, the only thing it really kind of screws up is the coordinates of your focus. You've got, once you solve for C, you've got to add and subtract that to either your X or Y value of your center, depending on what your major axis is. Okay, all right, hope that helps. Now, the last one we're doing is hyperbolas. Now, hyperbolas, the last kind of conic sections, um, those are, it almost looks like two um, opposite facing parabolas. They're not really, um, but I don't know if this jogs anyone's memory from algebra two. You still have a major axis, which on a hyperbola, they don't call it a major axis. They call it a transverse axis. Okay, and that is the axis between your two vertices. Okay, and then you're not necessarily plotting points on the hyperbola. What you're doing is graphing more the asymptotes. All of these dashed lines are your asymptotes. Okay, um, so the only other thing that kind of differs here on the equations themselves, what makes a hyperbola different on the equation from an ellipse is a minus in the middle, okay? Minus in the middle. And whichever variable is listed first, okay, is going to be your, what I would call your major axis or your transverse axis, okay? So in this case, notice your X here is listed first, so your transverse axis here is horizontal. On this one over here, your Y is listed first, so your major or transverse axis is vertical. Okay, that's what we're talking about. And you get your asymptotes, all those dashed lines, by essentially what we would call the vertex and the covertex of an ellipse. When you find those, that's what you draw your little box around, your rectangle, using your A and B numbers and then your asymptotes go are the diagonals of that rectangle essentially okay so then your hyperbola curves follow those asymptotes okay now down here again one other big change between hyperbolas and ellipses is the formula for c c squared now is a squared plus b squared on an ellipse, it was a squared minus b squared, if you remember that. This is a squared plus b squared, okay? So let's look at the next one. An equation of a hyperbola is given. So x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16. First thing that jumps out at me, it does not matter. It does not matter which of the numbers on the bottom is bigger, like it does on an ellipse. The bigger number is going to tell you your major axis versus your minor axis. In this case, whichever one is first is going to tell you where your transverse axis is. Okay, so in this case, my a squared is 4, so that makes a 2, and my b squared is 16, so that makes my b. Four. Okay, now right off the bat, let me go down and remember the B is under the Y and the A is under the X. Okay, so A again was two, B was four. So if I go down here, here's my vertices right here, and then my B, let me do a different color. Here's my B. So really, you know those dashed boxes that they showed on the previous slide there? That's going to be my box. Doesn't matter which one's bigger. It matters on a hyperbola which one is in the front because that's the positive. Okay? So this right here is my transverse axis. Again, on an ellipse, it's kind of like what we would have called our major axis, sort of. Um, but that's why we don't call it major and minor because it may not be the longest one. 
Okay, um, now our vertex, thankfully on this hyperbola, it's centered at the origin because we don't have any H's or K's. So our vertex here, the smaller X value is gonna be a negative two comma zero. The bigger X value of course is a positive two comma zero. Um, now our focus, let's remind ourselves our formula for C. So C squared on this one is A squared plus B squared. Again, on an ellipse, it was minus. On a hyperbola, we're adding. So this is 4 plus 16 or 20. So that means that C is plus or minus 2 root 5. Okay. So my foci is 2 root 5. Again, positive and negative. And again, they want the smaller x value here. So this is negative 2 root 5, comma 0. This is positive 2 root 5, comma 0. Now, asymptotes. Okay, your asymptotes, if we look back here at, at this purple box that I made, okay, your asymptotes are literally your diagonals. They are going from one corner to the other. Let me scroll down a little more. Okay, one corner to the other. Those are your asymptotes. So what is your hyperbola? look like then your hyperbola is going from your vertex and it is hugging those asymptotes okay it's hugging them that's what your hyperbola is going to look like so if we're talking about the formula if you will or the equation of your asymptotes your asymptotes, again, we are going through this box. So essentially think of it in terms of rise over run. We are going up four over two, or we're going down four over two. So your asymptote is going to be y equals plus or minus b over a x. Now, it's only B over A when your transverse axis is horizontal. Okay, if your transverse axis was vertical, if we had a hyperbola that was pointing up and down instead of left and right, it would be plus or minus A over B. But B over A. So in this case, it is plus or minus, obviously, 4 over 2 X or plus or minus 2 X. Those are my asymptotes. So here for asymptotes, it says up in the directions, if I remember, enter your asymptotes as a comma separated list of equations. So they want the whole thing. So they want y equals negative 2x comma y equals positive 2x. Those are my asymptotes. Those are the equations of my dotted lines, okay? I should have extended that one a little farther. Did you all get the idea? Now, my transverse axis determine the length again. Transverse axis is just the distance or the length from one vertex to the other. Well, they're both two away from the origin, so that makes the length four. Okay? And of course, your length of your transverse axis is just two times A, always. And like the length of your major axis on an ellipse is 2A, minor axis is 2B. Okay? I hope this makes sense. I hope this is kind of ringing a bell um, from what we did in Algebra 2. We did cover this. It's just been a while. And I apologize. I thought 9-2 was the last section. Well, it was last time I checked the final. Um, and then I noticed he uh, snuck in some Chapter 11 problems. So I wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to do those. Okay. So hope this is helpful. Good luck.